Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir à tous les auditeurs. I am Owen Leroy for, uh, the, for Hammock, the Haitian American Museum in Chicago. We are located at 4654 North Racine Avenue, in the corner of Leyland and, uh, and Racine. Uh, the zip code in Chicago is 60640. You can uh, see uh, more details about uh, the museum's activity at uh, www.hammock.org or you can send us an email at uh, info uh, uh, This afternoon uh, we are going to do something different uh, uh, that you have seen in, uh, in the activities uh, for the museum and this TV program. Uh, we are going to talk about the museum, and you are the new museum, talking about ourselves, but we will do it in a totally different way, by uh, introducing uh, a new uh, director working there. His name is uh, Vishnu uh, Menon, uh, who uh, is in charge of uh, the programming, and we are very glad this afternoon to let you uh, listen to uh, some of the activities and uh, some of the stuff that uh, he's doing. Welcome, Fina. studying uh, Masters in Management at DePaul University, I also worked in the International Students Department and uh, what I did there was interact with all the international community, be it from any country, doesn't matter, so um, I interacted with the community to get the international student participation for uh, community service activities. So it was more like a non-profit role and um, at the same time it was multicultural. The reason why I came to US was to experience the different cultures, and which I got through uh, my, uh, my previous job in Nepal. And I, ever since I finished Nepal uh, and finished my work there, I wanted to continue doing the same and uh, work with other cultures and you know, get to know the other cultures more. That, uh, along with uh, working in a nonprofit environment, helping their business operations, marketing and financing initiatives, led me to work in the Asian American Museum. Now, would Terrell uh, Walton uh, be your first uh, curated project or what? Um, actually, uh, when I first came here, uh, we had um, an artist from Pakistan, a Pakistani American, you could say, and uh, her name is Shaila Emma, and we had her exhibit, and her uh, art was ex inspired by the Pakistani culture, and at the same time, uh, she had some uh, images from not images. She had some paintings from um, paintings that were inspired from Chicago as well. So her her completely work, her work was completely focused on uh, Pakistani culture and how she uh, assimilated to Chicago and um, the work about Chicago. So that was the first um, artist which I um, was part of, you know, to, to curate. And the second one was uh, Cindy Liss. She had, uh, she's a Haitian American and she had her artwork uh, here for about three months after uh, I joined here and then after that um, I had somebody else. Uh, and what we do here is we portray local artists as well as Haitian artists in uh, Chicago and their works here. Um, and uh, the programs are called Spotlight Program at, and Racing Program. And currently we have a Spotlight Program where we have a, a local artist from Chicago uh, Terrell Walton, and he is um, an entrepreneur. And the way this is his first, very first exhibit, and the way he got into the art was uh, from an interesting story from his side. Uh, and he thought art could be uh, a wonderful opportunity to uh, bring peace and end violence in uh, the city of Chicago. So while he was recovering from the trauma, he um, started painting, he started uh, doing his work. And uh, as you can see here, it's, uh, his exhibit is called Color Trauma. The reason, um, uh, as you can see, you know, all, the, uh, all the exhibits here, uh, all the artwork here are full of color, which he wants the um, viewer 
to form our own perspective and for that reason he didn't even have a description for every, any work here Yes, so, so basically uh, in this space, this space is uh, open not only for Asian artists or uh, black American artists, uh, you mean that uh, it's open for everybody? It is absolutely open for everybody. We promote diversity uh, in our, that is, that is why we have our Spotlight program. Spotlight program, as I mentioned already, you know, it's, it's uh, basically displaying or encouraging uh, local artists in Chicago to promote their work through the, uh, through the museum. And you know the most interesting part is we don't charge for uh, the artists to come inside or portray their work. So um, we we just try and promote the local artists, be from any culture, any you know uh, any identity. How was uh, this uh, exhibit uh, received by received by the community? This exhibit was received very uh, very interestingly by the community because uh, the title itself it says color from her and. People are uh, intrigued by the fact what could the title mean, because, as I said, you know the, the artist is keeping the interpretations open, and even the title itself is any any viewer can interpret by their own you know thoughts and experiences. The biggest project which we're working on right now is the uh, level benefit level 2019. Um, that is an annual gala with the museum, um, which we are having at the Newbury Library on December. 6 2019 uh, and from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock why we're doing this gala is to bring uh, the museum to the next level it's been seven years that the museum is here um, existing in chicago and both contributing to the multicultural tapestry and uh, at this point we are uh, currently looking for a bigger space another program we are involved is with it's called the in here chicago uh, with the chicago cultural lens and uh, how we're involved in Hit Chicago is that we are uh, screening a short documentary produced by Haitian American Museum and directed by Mr. Pavel Grachner. And the movie is called Kazal, the uh, community, the Polish, Haitian Polish community at, uh, in Haiti. And uh, the movie screening will be at the Polish American Museum. Okay, I'm inviting you all to um, this movie screening, which is uh, to be shown uh, October 18th, 6 to 8 p.m. It's happening at Polish Museum of America, 984 North Milwaukee, and uh, it's a, it's again about a uh, Haitian Polish community in Haiti. And I'm inviting somebody uh, who's more specialized in Haitian Polish community um, in Haiti. So his name is Mr. Ben Henderson. Ben, tell us uh, about uh, yourself and tell us about Kaza. My name is Benjamin Henderson, and I'm a museum educator here. I uh, cover the history and the culture of Haiti here, and I am in charge of developing education programs relating to it. And uh, what, what is uh, that uh, the story of Kazal? Well, Kazal is kind of unique because, well, it kind of flies in the face of certain notions that we have about Haiti. Um, Haiti is, um, we often see Haiti through a Franco-African lens even though Haiti kind of has its own unique culture and its Creole and all that, so. But, but these uh, the people of Kazal are descended from Polish legions who came to Haiti, Haiti in order to help Napoleon um, occupy the country and reinstate slavery. The thing is, the Poles didn't really know about that. They only really found out about this when they got the boat. Boat. So, what started happening was um, a lot of these Poles started deserting and started um, fighting against the French alongside the Haitians. Now, after the revolution, um, a quart, most, of, most of these Poles left back to Poland because they wanted to fight for Polish independence, but a few hundred did stay behind and, and created a notable population within the area around Kazal. Now. Now, this has always been kind of the sort of thing that the court has sort of shown the more cosmopolitan aspects of the Haitian Revolution. The Haitian Revolution was not an isolated global event. It was a, a big event that had broad dimensions. That um, was a really big part of the, the revolutions of the 18th century. Ben, uh, do you or does uh, the museum has a Haitian art collection? So do you have uh, 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 something to uh, show to the public about uh, uh, your historical art collection? 
Uh, yes, we do have a historical collection of art um, made by volunteers on this side of the museum. Um, most of these paintings represent um, certain events throughout the Haitian Revolution and some aspects of Haitian life and culture. Um, over here we got a depiction of the Boys Kaiman right here. Now, Boys Kaiman was um, kind of the, the pushing off point for the slave revolution. Now, one of the most important things to remember about the Haitian Revolution is there was kind of three revolutions sort of going on. A white revolution against um, taxation without representation, but wasn't for slave freedom. A um, free color revolt, which wanted the same things, but wanted um, black freedom included in black equal rights included in it. And then the slave revolt, um, started by bulk men over here, who, of course, just wanted to end slavery. slavery. Now, bulk men, we don't really know much about Bokeman because, well, he was a slave, so there's not that much artifacts, um, there's not much of a paper trail, so I'll, a lot of it's guesswork, so hence why we, hence why the painter here has added so many ads to this person here. So. Now, over here we got the Haitian, the leaders of the Haitian Revolution. Revolution um, we got uh, Toussaint Levancheur over here on the top right corner. Um, he's a he was the guy who really consolidated the revolt into a, a cohesive political force and had, by um, 19, 1794, had um, largely had the French recognized his authority and um, by then had for, pretty much pressured the French enough to pretty much accept the end of slavery. Um, to the right of um, Toussaint is John Jacques Bessalines. Now, um, Dessalines emerged as the leader of the revolution after um, Toussaint was captured by the French when Napoleon decided that he was going to reinstate slavery. Now, Dessalines um, won the War of Independence, but due to his um, authoritarianism, he was uh, assassinated by um, a group of conspirators. And leadership of the, of the colony of the now independent Haiti um, fell to um, these two um, right below. Now, these two were competitors, so the, the colony split, so the new nation split into two. Um, a um, kingdom of Haiti, Haiti in the north, ruled by Henry Christophe, and a republic of Haiti to the south, ruled by um, Alexander Petion. Now, Christophe is um, well known for um, being a, a sort of autocratic rule, but ruler, but he was also known for his emphasis on education, infrastructure projects, and he was known for um, interacting with um, abolitionists abroad, who he tried to um, work with in order to spur on movements against slavery in um, particularly Britain, and um, try to get Haiti recognized as an independent country. Um, Petion, Petion is the guy kind of who has the most notable legacy in Haiti because He's um, responsible for the partition of lands following the revolution. Um, some of this was done out of egalitarianism, others out of necessity because, well, a lot of people were just taking land and he just needed um, a way to pay for soldiers at this point. But what happens is you have the dismantling of these large scale farm, farms, plantations, which were really hated by the slaves and um, gradually they get replaced by um, basically these um, independent homesteads steads where Haitians largely lived um, kind of, they kind of self-managed themselves. So, so in spite, so what starts to happen is you start to get this kind of rural democracy that emerges in Haiti that in spite of the latent authoritarianism of later Haitian regimes and later Haitian presidents, kind of becomes their sort of bastion of independence after the revolution. Now, over here, where, um, I'll, I'll show you one more painting. Um, we have a picture of um, Simon Bolivar and uh, Alexander Petion. Um, Bolivar is to your left, and uh, Petion is to your right. Well, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two because Petion was a, a quadroon, so he was um, only one third black, so he looked practically white himself. Um, uh, this painting, um, painting highlights really the, the global dimensions of the Haitian Revolution and uh, 
uh, the cosmopolitanism that was behind it. Um, Bolvar, Bolvar is known as the one of the founding fathers of mo most of the United Nations of South Africa. That this includes uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, um, named after him, of course. And um, Bolvar came to um, the Republic of Haiti for help in order to um, free the country from to free all these Spanish countries from Spanish rule. And uh, Petion provided aid, funding, and in exchange for freeing slaves there. Now, this kind of highlights what makes the Haitian Revolution unique, is that once the Haitian Revolution happens, pretty much every nation south of Texas, pretty much, that has a, every nation that has a revolution south of Texas, pretty much ends slavery, with a notable exception for Brazil. So the Haitian Revolution kind of really set the tone for debates on slavery, slavery afterwards. Welcome to the Haitian American Museum of Chicago. Come learn history, come learn culture, look at art, have yourself a good time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, quietly sure that uh, some of you uh, loved uh, that uh, trip uh, at the museum to visit uh, uh, Vishnu and uh, Benjamin. And uh, also, I uh, presume that some of you are sad to hear that uh, uh, one of uh, the fathers of Chicago, so-called, the gentleman who donated uh, the bust of uh, Jean-Baptiste Pont du Sable to the city of Chicago passed away uh, uh, last month. And uh, tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock at the Du Sable Museum, there will be uh, a ceremony, uh, a tribute to his life. And uh, all of us are welcome uh, to uh, 
attend that ceremony. And also, I would like uh, to uh, reiterate uh, the fact that uh, uh, you need to take a look at uh, the small uh, museums as well. Therefore, uh, pay a tribute to uh, the city Chicago's uh, Asian Communities Museum. Uh, and for that reason, I will uh, take the opportunity to add uh, the reading of uh, uh, the statement by the artist uh, Terrell Watson, you, Walt, Walton. You have seen his painting, and I'm sure that uh, you would like to hear his word. As a rising artist and passionate entrepreneur, Terrell Watson's artistic expression and story is truly one of trial and triumph. As the oldest in his family, he, was, he has always taken one of the role of being a leader despite uh, facing many setbacks along the way. Growing up on uh, Chicago's South Side, Terrell experience of attending uh, more funerals than weddings or graduations permits uh, through uh, his work. At the age of 22, well, uh, shoveling his girlfriend's uh, phone porch, Terrell encountered a life-altering moment as he was shot as a result of a mistaken identity. It was at the moment that uh, Terrell considered surviving that day a second chance to figure out uh, his purpose and fulfill it. His artwork exemplified his deeper purpose and allowed him to share his testimony. His pieces expressed the pain and poverty of the personally experienced while simultaneously voicing his understanding of nature an issue worldwide. Most inspired, inspired by artists uh, such as George Kondo, Pablo Picasso, and Jean-Michel Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, je m'excuse, Terrell, uh, Terrell's artwork has been uh, centered on mediums of paintings, design, sketch, fixed media, and graffiti. His current artwork uh, focused on unity, truth, peace, and social responsibility and an offer to help uh, reduce and eliminate the growing violence. Uh, of uh, Christian faith, uh, with uh, strong family ties, this young visionary is just uh, getting started uh, on what is sure to be a legendary part of utilizing sex expression to help be an active uh, part of change and the same community that help uh, make him the man that he is today. Uh, everybody uh, today is uh, a man for uh, themselves and this uh, uh, city. And uh, I am uh, uh, welcoming you uh, at the museum, along with uh, Ben and uh, Vishnu, uh, to see uh, an exhibit that will uh, uh, probably uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, life in the city of Chicago. You can uh, still uh, visit us at uh, 4654 North Racine Avenue at the corner of Leyland and Racine uh, in Chicago. The zip code is 60640. Uh, 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 the website is hammock.org and uh, you can find uh, more details and more information at info at uh, hammock that ORG. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for uh, uh, the time that uh, you take to watch our show. Uh, we are uh, hoping to uh, see you next time in the same station. And uh, this is Owen Leroy, votre serviteur. Thank you.